Not long ago, nearly all office information was stored on a common medium, namely paper. It may not have been efficient, but it was simple, consistent, and intuitive. The arrival of the computer changed all that. Much information still resides on paper. But increasingly, office information is arriving in the form of computer databases, email, scanned images, and other electronic documents. There are good computer tools for dealing with each of these. But increasingly, the grouping and coordination of information from multiple sources has become difficult. The work described in this video represents an effort to regain the simplicity and consistency of paper documents in the context of the modern electronic office. The work is embodied in a prototype office information management product known as Workscape. It was commissioned by Digital Equipment Corporation and produced at Maya Design Group in collaboration with Digital's engineering staff. The project has the following specific design goals. First, to provide a single uniform computer application capable of presenting information to office workers without regard to the information source or the form of its underlying representation. Second, to define an interface paradigm which would permit users to organize and deal meaningfully with hundreds of documents at once. Third, to define a product which is simple and intuitive enough to succeed as a front office application, part of the fabric of daily work and not just a tool for backroom specialists. Maya's design effort began with a series of field studies of workplace environments in which such a product might be used. A field research team consisting of a human factors specialist and an industrial designer conducted interviews and observational studies of 22 individuals from seven different work environments. The goal was to broaden our understanding of how office workers organize their workspaces to support the access, storage, and retrieval of information. Several robust findings emerged from these studies. First, our subjects made extensive use of spatial arrangements of paper as a device for short-term storage and organization of documents. For many users, piles of documents were the dominant means of organizing their world. Second, we observed many instances of the extensive use of post-it notes as a medium for capturing, arranging, and sharing small chunks of information, often in creative ways. A key advantage of this medium appeared to be its flexibility and modularity for the manipulation of small units of information. These concepts of data modularity and spatial organization are directly reflected in Workscape's interface metaphor. This metaphor contains only a single uniform data object, known simply as a document. Documents are represented to the user as two-dimensional objects rendered in a three-dimensional virtual workspace. A series of purely graphical studies were carried out, exploring visual and aesthetic aspects of the evolving design. These studies were done early in the project so that the technical implications of the graphical goals could be anticipated early in the engineering cycle. Architecturally, Workscape employs a client-server model between a user application, known as the viewer, and any number of network data repositories. The primary job of the viewer is to receive documents from repositories and render them in the user's workspace. Once a document is fetched into the workspace, it remains there until it is discarded by the user. A document may appear only once within a given workspace, but may appear simultaneously in different workspaces, either within or across users. The current Workscape prototype exists as a motif application running on a variety of digital platforms. This prototype serves as a testbed for the development of end-user applications within the Workscape environment. The number of primitive user operations defined by the interface is very small. A document may be dragged in the XY plane, much like the dragging of objects in traditional GUIs. If a document is dragged by one of its corners, however, the move occurs in the Z dimension and moves the document closer or further in the three-dimensional workspace. Note that there is no modality associated with opening or closing documents. They may be near or far and thus appear to be large or small, but they are not opened or closed, they're just there. Documents may contain icons in order to make them more distinctive, but they never become iconified. Double-clicking on a document will move it all the way forward, 
rendering it at its true size. This is just a shortcut for dragging it forward using corner dragging. Another primitive manipulation of documents is clipping. Dragging a document edge may clip the edge in, allowing the user to make the document smaller while still being able to read it. These basic operations, XY dragging, Z dragging, and clipping, constitute a basic vocabulary of actions which may be applied to any kind of document, regardless of its underlying representation or source on the network. Collections of documents can be grouped into tiles, piles, and other spatial configurations, which can then be manipulated as a group. The huge virtual space available in the back of the workspace affords a visible, highly accessible data space for arranging and storing work in progress. In order to support more complex user actions, Workscape provides a complete multi-threaded scripting environment. Scripts are delivered to users in special documents called tools. Architecturally, tools are no different from any other document, but they have a distinctive look and their purpose is primarily to perform actions rather than to contain information. This is the find tool, whose purpose is to search for documents, either within the workspace or in network repositories. It contains an editable text field into which the user types a search expression. For instance, I may search for all documents of type email and from Lee. It also contains a switch which activates the tool. As documents are found, they are gathered into a pile immediately behind the tool. Note that the interface is designed to be completely non-blocking. A given tool may be busy for an extended period, or even continuously, but the user is always free to invoke other tools or to perform other actions elsewhere in the workspace. Clipping is used to manage the complexity of tools. The Find tool has many options, which are controlled by switches that are normally clipped away at the bottom of the tool. For example, I can indicate whether to search the workspace or specific repositories. In a further clip area are less frequently used controls, like those to specify the sort order of documents within the pile. The Find tool is modular. It contains a number of slots onto which I can drop other tools, which, like Unix filters, can be strung together to augment the basic behavior of the tool. By convention, all tools have a help text clipped off their top edge, so users have access to instructions without having to learn to use a separate help facility. Certain tools generate small tag documents which are attached to other documents as visual markers. The Find tool placed a new tag on this email message, since it's one that I haven't seen before. Since the tag is just a document, I can detach it from its parent and even drop it on another document. Documents may be annotated using the sticker pad, which is a tool that generates small yellow documents with sticky backs. I can type a note on a sticker and then drop it onto any other document. The sticker will attach itself to the document and remain there until removed. The orthogonal spatial nature of the interface makes it easy to script tools for visualizing relationships among documents. This arranger tool, for example, is capable of organizing documents in three space according to user specified criteria. For example, I can assign the X dimension to the two field and the Z dimension to creation date. Such mapping of document attributes to spatial dimensions can be a very powerful aid in visualizing patterns in a collection of documents. Workscape documents are polymorphic in that the contents of a document are decoupled from the way in which it is rendered. For example, the sticker pad has a control which can morph the notes it dispenses into one of three forms, a generic note, a reminder note, and a phone message form. Further, 
Any workscape document can be morphed into these forms simply by dropping it on the path. 